Okay. We're here with senior safety, Elijah Hicks. Um, got a new community service program that he's excited about. Uh, back on the field this week. He's excited about that as well. If you have questions for Elijah, go ahead and uh, let me know. We'll go ahead and get started with Jeff Ferrato. Go ahead, Jeff. Elijah, good to see you. Um, Kyle's telling us about your emergency grant program. So why don't you give us some details on how that works and, and when it is exactly you find time to sleep. <laughs> Uh, thanks for asking. Um, so essentially, it's an emergency grant program um, through my um, Intercept Poverty Foundation. It's a nonprofit, um, and I, I created it a couple, oh, about two years ago. And so now we're just um, helping students on campus um, put five to seven hundred dollars in their pocket uh, to help them overcome some financial roadblocks. Whether it's um, you could use some extra food. Um, maybe your car broke down and you need some assistance trying to get that fixed, or you may need a new laptop or get something fixed on the laptop. Um, those are things that I know affect people from studying. <laughs> and so um, I, I just wanted to be able to create this and, and find a way to help, you know, students be able to focus on school and not be so worried about um, how they going to get their next meal or how they going to get their laptop fixed. And so um, I, I'm someone who am fortunate enough to have a scholarship, but, you know, even with that, um, I know how struggling and tough, you know, college could be. So um, it's something that touch is very close to me and I want to, you know, do what I can to bring attention to, you know, the issue of like poverty on campuses and, you know, try to do my best of letting people know so we can all, you know, chip in and help. How did you uh, determine there was a real need for this and, and where do you generate the funds that you're able to share with people? Yeah. So, well, one, I have uh, 12 siblings. Uh, I have a big family, 12, including me, actually. And so I have um, family members who are in college who are not on scholarship and family members who had to drop out because they had to get a job and couldn't focus on um, um, couldn't focus on school because they needed to go get money. And, and also just being here at Cal, you know, you, you go into class with people who, who's like, they got to eat, um, they got to go to bed, not eating anything, or, you know, they might just be eating a lot of top ramen and stuff. And I relate to that struggle because it was like, those are things I had to do growing up. So, um, you know, it's just like, you know, I want to figure out ways to help because I'm not the type of dude to just, um, complain about issues and problems, I'm going to try to find ways to help solve them and, and be like a, a solution <laughs> instead of just just always bringing attention to issues without doing anything. That's not really what I'm about. So I just wanted to create some type of action here. And again, how do you generate the funds for this and how many people yeah. already have benefited? Yeah, so uh, generate the funds simply by um, asking for donations. I mean, uh, I was... Um, posted it on social media and um, and it got some donations there. I've had some um, um, donors and, and fans, they all chipped in and supported. They seen what I did with the COVID-19 um, campaign. I was raised over 70,000 for that. Um, so I have like a little following with Intercept Poverty now and, and, and you know, they support what we're doing. So um, that that's kind of how we raise funds and you know, the more we raise, the more people will be able to help because, you know, it's not just a, uh, uh, a one-time thing. It's an ongoing issue. Um, and so um, what was the other part to that? I'm wondering question? how many people you've been able to help with this yeah. so far. Yeah, so this, this semester, we're just now starting it. That's why, uh, as Kyle mentioned, we're uh, posting stuff out um, today It's, it's um, so students can know about it. Um, and, and we'll well, there'll be a lot of students being able to benefit from it um, coming forward. If I can ask you a football question, then I'll give up the floor here. Um, obviously, the season has not gone the way you or any of your teammates would have liked so far. Um, what in the past week and a half during the bye week do you think happened or you guys were able to do to kind of turn things around perhaps? And how much encouragement do you get from the fact that you did beat Oregon a year ago? Uh, I mean, I mean, that's what we wanted. We were glad to get that win last year. Um, uh, but this is a new year. Um, and during the bye week, we've really dialed into the things that we need to improve on. 
Um, the DB room specifically, we feel like um, we've been getting better each week, um, but we're, we're hungry. We're hungry. We, we know we could be playing a lot better than we've been putting out there, um, but we definitely got the right mindset in our room, and um, we are very optimistic of what we could do um, when we are um, executing like how we know how and paying attention to the details. So um, we're, we're excited for this week. Um, um, and, you know, what last year's victory um, tells our team is that it doesn't, we don't need uh, any kind of special plays. We don't need new players. We don't need uh, 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 anything different than what we already have. We can um, win with what we have, and we've done it before. Um, so um, that's, the, uh, that's pretty much how we're looking at it right now. Thank you, Elijah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go to David Bush from Bear Insider. Uh, hi, Elijah. Um, what, uh, taking a look at Oregon, uh, what, uh, what problems do they present to, uh, to a secondary? And what, what, what do you think of their offense? Um, I mean, like every team in the Pac-12, they got talented receivers. Uh, they have a lot of ability. But I think it's more so of how we execute our scheme and um, our attention to detail um, and how we prepare during the week. Um, so really, I, I always look within and, and look at, you know, mm -hmm. the things that we can do and how we can improve from last week. Because, you know, a lot of the same issues pop up from last week's game and things like that. So um, as long as we... Um, you know, just dial in into what we do um, as far. And obviously we're going to watch film and do all those things. But um, if we play the brand of football, we know how in the secondary, um, we should be pretty good. Uh, when you were to say that you want to address issues, what uh, what specifically do you think that you, the secondary has to improve on? Um, I mean, there's always room for growth. Um, you know, we got younger guys who's now at the second part of the season. Um, so they're no longer young guys anymore. So that experience definitely helps. And um, I've kind of communicated with that with them that, you know, y'all have played five games already or however many we've had so far. Like, you know, you're not you, – you're technically a freshman or a redshirt freshman or however young guy, but um, you got these games under your belt. Um, you guys have been improving every week. And as you guys can see, you've made plays and, you know, we've given up plays, but, um, you know, the talent isn't far off. It's, you're going to see this about the same amount of talent every week. Um, you got the speed, you got enough strength. Um, it, it's really just the little details of everything. And, and so it, explaining that to our guys and, and getting them to trust and believe it, um, is, is what we've been doing. And so they're gaining more and more confidence and I'm excited to see um, what we do this week. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Trace Travers from Rivals. Elijah, good to see you this afternoon. Yeah, um, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, with uh, this past week has been a lot of developmental practices for you guys with what Coach Wilcox said, and he mentioned uh, Miles Williams as someone standing out. How has he improved in the defensive backfield since he got to Cal? He's improved a lot, just his mindset um, as far as just, you know, paying attention to details and just wanting to practice, wanting to get better, wanting to compete. Um, I think that's, that's the biggest improvement we've seen from him. Um, and, and really uh, from all of our guys um, through, during this season is just, you know, continue to be hungry, not folding when things get tough, just knowing that, you know, we're going to figure it out. We're going to be straight. And as a six year guy on this team, I think most of your teams at Cal have started out pretty strong before maybe losing a couple games. And this year has been different in that regard. Have you seen any change in kind of, the mood of the team because of that or is it still a kind of determination we we have to work on ourselves every week type of thing um I mean losing sucks but like we don't have we don't got the type of guys that's just gonna give out give up I mean like we kind of get closer and you know we get hungrier and and we want to get this bad taste out of our mouth but 
um, I, I think it's bringing us together and making us, you know, just work that much harder and, and, and ultimately go harder. It's just time to win. It's just time to win. And, and so that's the type of energy you see at practice in the meeting rooms and stuff. So we just ready. We ready for this. We just trying to show out. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, anybody with the final question? Okay, you'll you'll uh, see a lot more on social media about what's going on with the program, probably give you some more info. I'm sure Elijah's probably happy to answer any questions you might have. So if you have any for him, just, uh, I'm sure they can all get you personally. They don't need me at this point. You know, Elijah, uh, yeah. They can all, you guys all can just uh, check in with Elijah on your own, so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thanks you guys. Gonna, I'm for, only gonna hinder things. Yeah, no, I appreciate them listening out. And I, any way they could help amplify what I'm doing with Intercept Poverty, I appreciate that so much. I'm willing to do one-on-one -on -one interviews, whatever. So I'm, I'm thankful for it all. So I'm out. It's all him now. He doesn't need a PR person anymore at this point. <laughs> no more. All right, Elijah. Thanks Thank for you. your time, man. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, right. everybody. Okay. We'll see ya. Bye.